pretty liberated and free and we say things that you can't say in America. So I had to learn it the hard way and now I come to Australia and now I'm being corrected again. So let me, uh, let, let's do it like this. If I say something that offends you, you know, you do like this. Yeah? Yeah. Did I say something right now? Already. So uh, let's just do like this, that if I say something that offends you, you can, um, you can just uh, lift your hand, wave it, and, uh, and I'll try to take it back again. I'll, I'll try to you know, uh, undo what I just said. Um, I used to have a group in Denmark when I first started preaching. They were called charismatic critics, criti critical charismatics. And I didn't know who they were. I never found out who they were, but they came to all my meetings and they would sit in the front, a whole bunch of them. And then when I was introduced to the pulpit, they would stand up, they would dust their, you know, wipe the dust off their feet and they would walk out without saying a word. And I never understood why they came and I never understood why they walked. Uh, uh, it wasn't what I said because they never heard what I said, but they were very critical. And uh, apparently they had to demonstrate when I was preaching. Yeah, so that's how I started in ministry in Denmark. Then I had uh, critical bishops and critical Lutherans and I had all kinds of critical people. But you know what happened? The more, the more critical people became, the more people came to our meetings. And in the end, you know, we didn't have to advertise because the bishop, the Lutheran bishops, they were already putting me front page before I came, warning people not to come. And so people were not to come. And look, just uh, just in the fall, here now, we were back in Denmark preaching, and national television was there waiting for me before I even arrived. And there was a witch on television. She said, I know this man, he's dangerous. I was in his house, and he had so many Bibles, and he was laughing all the time. He's very dangerous. <laughs> That made people even come to my meetings. And the Lutheran bishop, he was like, this is horrible. These people are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can't have it. They're not like us. And I was like, thank God I'm not like you. <laughs> oh, but Lord, you know, I can't have, you know, church should be a joyful place, yeah? And uh, you know what? I was actually taken to court by the health department in Denmark. I told pastor here, 10 years ago, I was sentenced by the health department for quackery. I didn't even know what it was. I had to look it up in a dictionary, you know. Pra quackery is practicing license without, uh, practicing medicine without a license, yeah. And I, I never even thought I was practicing medicine. I was just pre praying for people that were sick. And, you know, we saw cripples getting healed and cri cripples becoming preachers, you know. It was pretty wild. So the, the health department was after me for a long time. And uh, one day they raided our house, our home, shut down our ministry, and, um, took out computers and I was charged with financial fraud because I was the first preacher who was ever blessed in Denmark, yeah? And uh, after two, three years and 5,000 emails, I was exonerated from that charge. Then they found a machine gun in my house. That's not so cool either, but uh, they found a machine gun, so I was charged with illegal arms possession. I tried to tell them that there was a birthday present from a pastor who gave it to me. It was from the Battle of Berlin from 1945. It was a, like, a, like a historical thing, you know. They, it had no hammer in it. The barrel was cut through and it was taken out of Russia as a toy. So I had to translate the papers from Russian into Danish. Then I was exonerated from that charge. Then I was charged with attempted manslaughter. They say, you preach Jesus Christ can heal. What if people believe it and stop taking their medicine? You might endanger their lives. Well, that charge never made it either. So finally, the final charge which took me to court was quackery. And I was like, quacker, what? And, and we looked it up and I realized, it was, you know, you, you see those old Western movies, right? With that guy standing with a tall hat on and he's got a feather in his head and he's trying to sell this, this thing, you know, people need to drink. And, and you have somebody in the crowd, you know, who comes in and can't walk and, you know, comes in and, and he drinks some of that stuff and he's jumping around and everybody wants to buy that bottle, right? That's a quack. <laughs> and and they, they, they said I was a quack. And I haven't sold no medicine or nothing, and I haven't prayed for any, you know, holy water or distributed any uh, special uh, oil from Israel. You know, I was just preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, and next thing, I am sentenced for quackery. Can you believe it? They took me to court for that. It was a joke, but one of the accusations in court was that I wasn't a typical Danish preacher. They said, he is too full of joy, he's not, uh, or he's not uh, dignified like a Danish pastor should be. And, 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 and he's behaving like an African. And that's when I stood up and I said, Your Honor, I am guilty. And he was like, I am guilty. I don't want to be like an ice cream. You know, I don't want to be cold and soft. I, I want to be on fire for the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. And he got so angry and said, Shut up and sit down right now. And I was like, No, I'm guilty. I want to be judged, you know, for being on fire. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Can you believe it?
Um, I got my wife here today. We have been actually in Australia 32 years ago. We hitchhiked through Australia on, yeah, well, on, our, on our finger, yeah. Um, we were here 32 years ago for two months on our honeymoon. We slept outside in the parks and all kinds of places. I remember we were in Cairns, Cairns up north, and I, we were sleeping in a park and we were wondering of these big birds that were flying over our heads in the night. We found out they were giant bats. We got a little scared of that. <laughs> then they started raining in the morning. We tried to run out of the park and it turns out it was a sprinkler system that started <laughs> four o'clock in the morning. So I do remember up here. Um, but I got my wife with me here. It's not so often she gets to travel with me. Uh, and she's here to say hi to you, yeah? Yeah.